Hello, this is Dean and welcome to my video. In today's video, the homeowner is wanting me to install an outlet on what used to be an outside wall, but is now located in the sunroom. So let me show you how to do that and let's get after it. Today's project begins with the need to go through this outlet, through the wall, to the outside of this wall, which just happens to be brick, and mount an additional outlet. We begin by using our trusty tester, plug it in the outlet. It's not important what the lights mean at this point, just that they're on. We find the appropriate breaker and flip it. And then we test both the upper and the lower portion of the outlet to make sure this light is off. Now it's important to measure to find out approximately where the hole is going to be when we drill through the wall on the outside. We begin the project proper by removing the outlet plate and then the outlet itself. And I want you to note when we remove this that all the screws are occupied with wires on the left and the right side. So one of our challenges is how to mount a new outlet and piggyback it off this existing outlet. I'll show you how to do that. First we're going to remove all the wires on the left side turn the old outlet over and remove the black wires on the right side. We'll spread these wires out to kind of get them out of our way and we notice that there is a cable clamp connected to both sides We'll remove this. We want to make as much room as we can inside that old outlet before we begin to drill. Now note that there is a knockout plate in this old outlet. We don't have to drill through this. All we're going to do is press it outward to get it out of our way. Now we start with a standard drill bit to drill through the outside fascia. This doesn't take much drilling at all. And once through we change to our hammer drill with a small concrete bit and carefully begin to drill through to the outside of the brick wall. We move to the other side of the wall put on our protection and move to a larger masonry drill bit once again with our hammer drill. The reason for doing this is to enlarge the hole and give us plenty of working room for the new outlet wire. Now back on the inside we run our new outlet wire through our newly drilled hole. We cut the wire to length and then begin to remove the outer sheathing. Directly underneath this outer skin is a paper layer that covers all wires, so we need to remove it as well. And there's also a paper cover over our copper ground wire, so remove it. Now let's take a little trip to my workspace and I'll demonstrate for you why we ended up wiring this outlet like we did. Here's our handy test wall, which has been greatly overused but we'll use it one more time. Now remember when we removed at the user location the outlet from the wall 
all screws were occupied, just like my model. So what to do? Because we need to add some more wires from the additional outlet. Well, we have three options. First option is to use some expansion holes in the back of the outlet if your outlet is so equipped. For starters, let's use this 14-2 Romex and see if it fits. All you do is press it into the hole and it looks like it fits. Here I'm tugging it. But what if I wanted to remove it? What if this was a mistake? Well, first you loosen the screw. Then you just grab the wire after you press in on this little tab using the flat screwdriver. Pull the wire out, release the tab, and then don't forget to tighten the screw again if you didn't really mean to do this. What about a 12-2 Romex? What about a thicker wire? You think it'll work? Let's try. Looks like the answer to that is no, not on this outlet. But what about a ground fault circuit outlet, a GFCI type? Well, let's turn it over and see. On the back of these locations where we can press the wires in, let's try our 14-2 wire first. Let's see what happens. Looks like it fits very nicely. What about the 12-2 Romex? What do you think is going to happen there? Let's give it a shot. Well, looky there. It fits as well. That's not the kind of thing that we want to do, though. We don't want to mix two different types. Here, I tighten the screw down and watch what happens. I give that one a tug. Whoops. Our 14-2 comes out. Let's tighten it a little bit tighter and see if that'll fix it. Tug on it again. Bam. Comes out again. So in addition to not wanting to mix the thicknesses of the wire, we don't want to mix them certainly at uh, a single outlet. You can see the 14-2 fits very snugly by itself. Solution number two, we can create some jumper wires. These are seven or eight inches long and we also need some uh, wire nuts that will handle three of these wires bundled together. Let me show you how that works. So you take your existing outlet, we'll use the side uh, that has the uh, white wire on it. We remove it and we straighten out the stripped portion, the very end portion of this wire. Now this is going to be just a little bit too long for these purposes. So we want to measure all about three fifths of it and then snip it off. And then we'll bring in our new outlet wire and also our jumper wire, which is here. So let's take that jumper wire and couple it with the wire we just removed and also the white wire on our brand new outlet. Put them all three together. Take our wire nut and screw it up on the end. Make sure this is a very good, a very tight connection and double check it by tugging, not lightly, but vigorously on each wire to make sure it's not gonna pop out. Some people even put electrical tape over this connection and I would urge you to do that as well. I'm just gonna fold this one back out of the way and we're going to take our jumper wire now that's crooked on the end, place it back on the outlet. So what that in effect has done is allowed us to run two wires into one. So we only have to screw down one wire on the outlet instead of two, giving us more space. How does that look across the entire outlet? Well, let me show you here. We'll mount it in place. Here's the the side that has the black wires on it. Here you can see our jumper wire. The jumper is always the last one in the leg that goes to the screw. This was the old existing one. And here are our, here's one of the old existing ones and here's a brand new line coming in from the other side of the wall that are all tied together with a wire nut. 
You can see up above the white is done the same way and here I'm pointing to the copper, the jumper wires and the older copper wires that were already in place. Two of which are run to the wire nut and the jumper wire comes out of the wire nut to the green screw, the grounding screw. I think all that will fit in the wall. We'll take a look. Here's a couple of wire nuts in that shot. You can see them back in the back all squeezed in nicely. Everything fits. Well, what about the third way? This is the way I end up having to do it at the user location. We piggybacked onto an existing terminal. Let me show you how that works. So you want to take off an existing wire. Again, we'll use the white one as an example. And we take our new outlet wire. We put it on in a counterclockwise fashion and then we loop the original wire back on top of it in a clockwise fashion. Make sure this is a really good connection. You can see I'm fumbling a little bit here with it because the outlet is outside the wall. It's a little bit difficult to hold on to. It would actually be easier if it was inside the wall with this demonstration. But be sure and hold on to it as you tighten it down the wire on top that's in the clockwise direction continues to tighten as you tighten the screw down. Make sure this is a really good tight connection. This is the view from the right hand side of the outlet. You can see both wires on the same screw. And here it is on the left side. You see the white ones. And also we've had to couple all the ground wires together on the same screw. Now what if I didn't want to do this? What's an option? Well I can use this compression connector if I have one. I can run one, two, or three copper ground wires and come out the other side with just one and go back to the outlet. How does this work? Well this is soft brass and you can crimp this side down around the three, crimp this side down around the one, and then have the one copper wire going to the outlet. In my case, didn't have that. So I ended up, just like in my model here, running all three to the same screw, make sure it's a really good connection. Now back at the homeowner location, we put our cable clamp back in place. Our new outlet wire has been wired to the outlet, the old outlet at this point. We have piggybacked all the connections in. We screw this back down tightly to hold the wire bundle in place. Put the old outlet back in. Put the plate back on. And we turn our attention to the outside of the wall. Start with our brand new metal box, which has these metal brackets that fit at diagonal corners of the box. You get one affixed, turn the box around, place the other on. Get these good and tight. You'll also notice here on the back of the box there are a couple of indentions that you can drill through and put additional screws in place. When I was off camera and after putting these diagonal screws in, I actually drilled these out. Again, this was off camera and I put two additional screws in the middle of the box to hold it good and sturdy. Here we're cutting our outside wire to length, removing the sheathing. Cutting these just a little bit shorter, all three of them. We're stripping them and now we're twisting them into position. Take a tube of 100% silicone and fill up this hole around the wire. 
This is to prevent air leakage. Now we're going to mark for where the new box location will be. Place a level on top. Once that box is level, we take a permanent marker, mark through both holes. Then we remove the box. There's the mark for the top hole. There's the one for the bottom. We turn our attention to these masonry screws. These work really well. Grab an appropriately sized masonry drill bit. And it's important that you remove all the dust after drilling these holes. The dust acts as a lubricant and it prevents good adhesion of these screws. So make sure you either vacuum or blow out those holes. Here we place our screws and, and begin to tighten them down diagonally one at a time, one side at a time, one corner at a time, until these are good and snug. Then we turn our attention to the GFCI outlet as well. Now we're not going to mess around with the end of the outlet that has the yellow tape on it because we're not going to daisy chain this outlet anywhere else. This is the end of the line. So we place our white wire on the left side, our black wire on the right side. Turn the outlet upside down, turn our attention to the ground wire. Place it on the bottom on the green screw. Crimp it in position as well as you can and tighten it good and tight. Then we turn our outlet over so that the ground, that third hole is down. And then begin to screw it in one end at a time, a little bit at a time, just ease it into the box and screw it down good and snug. We have this a black cover that we break open. And again, one side at a time, tighten it up. Make our way back to the breaker box. And if you recall, it was the fourth breaker down on the right. Go ahead and flip it. and then check your outlet with your tester. Hey, this project is complete and thanks for watching.